Now in this video we'll talk about the auto-regulation of the renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. The blood enters the kidneys via the renal arteries, which adjourn to form the arcuate arteries, then blood flows to the interlobular arterioles. Then blood from the interlobular arterioles flows to the afferent arteriole, which in turn passes to the glomerular capillaries. This capillary system forms the glomerulus. The glomeruli are the many tiny capsules where the plasma fraction of the blood is filtered. Blood exits the glomerular capillaries by the afferent arteriole. The afferent arterioles then adjoin to the peritubular capillaries which form the vasa recta in the medullary region. Then the blood flows to the arcuate vein which in turn flows to the renal vein. It is very important to know that the cardiac output is equal to 5 liters of blood per minute. The renal blood flow is about 20% of the cardiac output. This means that the kidneys receive 1000 ml of blood from these 5 liters each minute. Under normal conditions, every minute 120 ml of the plasma from these 1000 ml of blood will be filtered across all of the glomeruli in the kidneys. This is the glomerular filtration rate, which is equal to uh, 120 ml per minute. It is very important to know that despite the change in arterial blood pressure, the renal blood flow and GFR do not change significantly. This is because under normal conditions, the kidneys exhibit an effective autoregulation of the renal blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. The major function of autoregulation in the kidneys is to maintain a relatively constant GFR and to allow very precise control of renal excretion of water and solutes. Autoregulation in the kidneys is primarily due to change in the resistance of the afferent arterioles. In a nutshell, if the mean arterial pressure increases, the afferent arterioles constrict, preventing excessive increase in renal blood flow and GFR. In the opposite case, if the mean arterial pressure decreases, the afferent arterioles dilate, decreasing resistance and increasing renal blood flow. An increase in the renal blood flow increases GFR. It is very important to know that there are two mechanisms which contribute to renal autoregulation, the myogenic mechanism and a tubular glomerular feedback mechanism. First, let's talk about myogenic mechanism. When a mean arterial pressure increases, the renal blood flow also starts increasing for a while, which stretches the arteriolar wall. Stretching the vascular wall in turn leads to the opening of stretch-sensitive calcium channels in a smooth muscle of the arterioles. When these channels open up, calcium starts moving from the extracellular fluid into the cell, causing the afferent arterioles to contract. This contraction prevents over distension of the vessel and at the same time by raising vascular resistance helps to prevent an excessive increase in renal blood flow. The renal blood flow decreases which in turn slows the GFR. The second mechanism that autoregulates renal blood flow and GFR in parallel is the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism. The tubular glomerular feedback mechanism depends on special anatomic arrangements of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. The juxtaglomerular apparatus is a specialized structure formed by the distal convoluted tubule and the glomerular afferent arteriole and afferent arteriole. The juxtaglomerular apparatus consists of two types of cells, 
One type are the macular denser cells, which are located in the initial portion of the distal tubule. And the second is juxtaglomerular cells located in the walls of the afferent as well as the afferent arterioles. The tubular glomerular mechanism has two components that act together to control GFR. First, an afferent arterial feedback mechanism, and second, an afferent arterial feedback mechanism. First, let's see how the afferent arteriolar feedback mechanism autoregulates the renal blood flow and GFR if I decrease the blood pressure in this patient. When a mean arterial pressure decreases, it leads to a decrease in renal blood flow and GFR for a short time. Decrease GFR slows the flow rate in the whole nephron, causing increased reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions in the ascending loop of Henle, thereby reducing the concentration of sodium chloride in the distal part of the tubule. It is extremely important to note that the macular denser, which are sensory cells located at the top of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, monitor the delivery of sodium chloride or possibly just chloride as an index of GFR. Decreased delivery of sodium ions to the macular denser initiates a signal from the macular denser that has two effects. First, they produce the substances which act on the afferent arterioles and cause vasodilation. Afferent arterial dilation decreases resistance to blood flow, which in turn increases renal blood flow and GFR, and helps return GFR toward normal. The second way the macular denser cells increase GFR is an afferent arterial feedback mechanism, which sends a signal to the juxtaglomerular cells of the afferent and afferent arterioles and stimulates these cells. In response, the juxtaglomerular cells start releasing renin. Renin released from these cells functions as an enzyme to increase the formation of angiotensin 1, which is converted to angiotensin 2. Finally, the angiotensin 2 constricts the afferent arterioles thereby increasing glomerular hydrostatic pressure and further increasing GFR and returning it toward normal. This was about how the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism autoregulates and returns the renal blood flow and GFR towards normal when the arterial pressure decreases. So this was uh, through the second mechanism an afferent arterial feedback mechanism. In the second case, suppose I increase the blood pressure in this patient. When the mean arterial pressure increases, it leads to increasing the renal blood flow, which in turn increases the GFR. Increased GFR also increases the flow in a whole nephron causing decreased reabsorption of sodium and chloride ions in a ascending loop of Halley. The cells of the loop of Halley got less time to reabsorb sodium chloride because of the rapid flow of water with sodium chloride. High delivery of sodium ions to the macular denser causes these cells to secrete substances causing vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction of the afferent arteriole decreases renal blood flow and GFR and returns GFR toward normal. So, to sum it up, it is very important to note that the macular dense cells respond to concentration of sodium chloride rather than the renal blood flow itself. After all of these, I hope the graph of the renal function curve will be clear for you. 
On one axis we have uh, the renal blood floor, here we have the mean arterial pressure, and here the GFR. As I already said, the kidneys auto-regulate between 80 and 180 millimeters of mercury. At these values, the renal blood floor stays constant at about 1000 ml per minute. The GFR is about 120 ml per minute and also will be kept stable at these values. If the mean arterial pressure drops less than 80 mm of mercury, the renal blood floor also starts falling down. As a consequence, GFR also starts falling in proportion to the renal blood floor. If the pressure increases to more than 180 mm of mercury, the renal blood floor increases and GFR also increases respectively. If a patient is administered with high doses of tetracycline, what happens with GFR? Recall that the high doses of tetracycline causes damage to the proximal tubules.